Welcome to uh, game number two, or rather game number three, but uh, round number two of uh, the Black Art Tournament. <laughs> this game is between uh, Blast Shield and uh, DOT. Um, people are uh, sort of suspecting DOT to be an alternate account of Alec, who uh, many people know from uh, from several casts. Um, I don't know personally, but uh, I guess it's a rumor that's uh, worth looking into. Um, it's taking place on Balance this game, and uh, Balance, as you may know, is a very build order dependent map. Uh, people typically use uh, Dual Land Hydro Rush, which uh, involves getting four, uh, two land factories on four power generators and an air factory from uh, the Hydro Power. This way, they get uh, a production lead of land units in the T1 stage and uh, still competitive air timing. That's sort of uh, an advanced build order, and I believe both players are uh, using it or a variation of it. So, um, I was about to say, Blast Chilled is picking up two land factories on four power generators, just like you're saying. But I see the air factory queued for DOT down here. It's not next to the Hydro, though. I don't see any of that, actually. Uh, DOT is making oh, no, three, three land, land factories, factories I think. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, cool. <laughs> I thought it was an air factory, my bad. A <laughs> uh, bit of a strong land presence for DOT, which is a good thing on this map, because you do have quite a bit of area to lock down in the early game. Obviously, later on, you do kind of narrow it down to a certain degree because you have three choke points, uh, left, right, and center. But in the earliest portion of the game where you've got tanks slipping around the outside edges and all kinds of nasty things happening, then you really need the land presence to be able to secure your position and then be able to eco. Looks like we got scouts out for blast chill, but no early aggression units, which is kind of odd, to be honest. I don't think he wants to go for extremely fast pillars. It feels like an odd choice. Like, extremely fast would be minute five-ish uh, upgrade, right? I don't think we are going to see that. But um, yeah, I'm also surprised. Like, the, I feel like there, sh uh, there should be earlier tanks. He made four engineers and three scouts before the first tank. I, I guess that's fine. It probably just it looks so late because... It will give him an opportunity because... to get more mass extractors built, but at the same time, if he doesn't have his placement right on the tanks, he could let one slip by and then it'll cause him problems later in the game. Well, I do think four engineers before the first tank is generally fine on Badlands, but uh, seeing three scouts travel into all sorts of directions without uh, without like a mech marine is, is sort of sort of strange, right? Like if you He's probably make... checking for an early bomber. Oh, by the way, it does look like that uh, third factory was canceled as a land and replaced with an air. I really thought I saw an air early on. It, he may have swapped it a couple times. Right. But he does have his air factory up, as does Blast Chilled. We've got first interceptor and an air scout out for Blast already, so he was a little bit faster on his timing. But we're going to see an interceptor out now for DOT, so things are pretty even footed uh looks like blast shield is also going to pick up the aggressive units on the left so total shutdown of the early aggression okay i'm pretty sure that dot is not alec because uh alec wouldn't play like this i think like <laughs> he overbuilt power so much basically his eco is perfectly balanced if he doesn't have the two hydros but of course he does have the two hydros so yeah he's overflowing power i think from this amount of power he could go gun upgrade but of course, it's way too early for a gun because he first has to expand. So this is just yes. uh, just really overbuilding power. Not enough build power in the air for this amount of power. So Blast Shield, Blast Shield. power. He's only built 40 more than his opponent has. But Blast Shield is also getting a second air factory down. So he'll be able to use some of that excess. All right. And you got to keep in mind how, uh, how Blue was uh, building his power a lot faster than Blast Shield. So there was overflow for quite a long time. And uh, that's that is uh, true essentially wasting wasting mass equivalent units. This is kind of one of the things that I struggle with sometimes because I people who watch me regularly will find this hilarious because I obviously power stall on a regular basis because sometimes I get distracted by things other than my eco. But I am always paranoid in one versus one about not having enough power. And so I tend to overbuild power in the earliest portion of the game. So I can definitely sympathize with DOT. <laughs> in general, yes. Um, 
Uh, I, I kind of think that balance is a staple these days. Like it's been on the ladder rotation for such a long time. Uh, I feel like everybody uh, should have a high level build order, at least a high level opening build order for balance that's going to guide you through uh, the first uh, six or seven minutes play time. That's just sort of my perspective on this, because even though like a dual land Hydro Rush is quite advanced in the way it's designed and in the way it uh, like it is trying to get two advantages on two different levels, air and, and land at the same time, it, it is not so difficult to execute. It's just a few steps you can easily remember. And then uh, this whole thought that goes into over or under building power disappears because it is automatic thanks to the build order. That is true. I am coming from the opposite side where basically I've played the game for long enough that I mostly understand how it works mechanically and I don't have a build order past uh, factory first. So I think there's a lot <laughs> of people first. playing from that viewpoint. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, for me, I, I did break the habit of rushing to the hydro on Badlands. I know that's a bad idea, but I'm sure that I probably still have some habits that you would find quite cringeworthy were you to watch me play on this map. DOT bringing three more land factories online to the left, bringing his total to nine. Um, that is quite a bit for T1 definitely more than blast chilled has planned so i'm not sure how that's going to play out a little bit later on as the t1 unit count increases on the south side but i do like how these players are both distributing their build power you don't want to have it all in one spot obviously you're going to be somewhat centralized around your spawn location but on badlands if you do have a slip you're often going to lose one side or the other and you want to have a little bit of build power in all of your locations so that you can spring back more easily. Also, you've got something on the front line to build engineers to go reclaim that fight you just had. So you need to have factories everywhere, not just eight of them in your core base. About eco-management of these two players, uh, I think um, that Blast Chill's eco-management is, uh, is a bit more streamlined and DOT is, is more jumpy when it comes to uh, correcting stalls. So both have been have been spa, uh, stalling on both layers for a bit, which is usually a good sign because unless like one of the stalls is much larger than the other, uh, that basically just says that both players are making use of all the resources they have, which is always a good thing because you could have tanks on the map or in your storage, and of course on the map is better. But um, I, I felt like that blast shield was uh, was a bit um, more professional when it came to uh, correcting this uh, this eco situation. So I, I feel like that. Uh, and Blast Shield is, is a bit more attentive when it comes to uh, details. And Two interesting developments that have just taken place. There was a strong air win for DOT, now 10 interceptors ahead. And also we have a T2 land factory for Blast Shield. He is now dropping a TAC missile defense and T2 power and then rolling out his first flak to try to counteract the air win that just took place. So he should be able to deny anything nasty that comes from the south side. Um, DOT has also dropped a T2 land just a moment ago, finished it, doesn't have his first unit yet, and he's also building a T2 engineer, but his HQ is on the far left, where Blast Shields is in his home base. Looks like he's also going T2 on his commander, 63% at the moment, so he'll have a T2 build base on both sides of the map. That is something that you really need, because tack defense is critically important. With all of these mass extractors clumped up together, if you miss building a TAC defense at any one location, TAC missiles can reach basically the whole map if you place them just slightly forward of your base. So you want to have that defense up as early as possible to prevent losing your eco to a rushed TAC missile. And none of the players seems to be interested in the plateaus. That's uh, usually one of the first things I get. Just because, uh, like, I've played many games in which I had nothing but the plateau left and somehow managed to win, both in team games and 1v1. Uh, I have a very close <laughs> personal relationship to the plateaus, but... Uh, well, I'm sure some people don't feel as uh, loving towards a massive red dirt as you do, but I do understand the fact that there are four mass extractors available up there, and the eco horror inside all of us should definitely want to get as many of those as possible. So from both perspectives, it's very odd 
that they're not going for the plateaus. It could be because they're nervous because of the tournament. That's like the most common excuse when it comes to tournament games. But uh, you just forget things. Right. Like you can cliff build there also with an engineer generally or with the ACU and you can also like drop there. What is very nice about the plateaus is uh, that there is a number of units that cannot fire up the plateau, but uh, pretty much everything in the game can fire down the plateau. So uh, this is uh, like a natural fortification and uh, one of the few cases in uh, Forge Alliance Forever where uh, like terrain has an actual defensive advantage and not just uh, like an advantage that's based on the uh, choke points or based on the resources on it. DOT is power building T2 support factories next to his commander. He's already got two up working on a third. That's going to give him four T2 factories total, and they are already building Ilshivas. So he's probably going to start trying to secure an advantage with those. Uh, Ilshivas, of course, kind of T2.5 units ish. They are on the good side of the T3 factory upgrade, though, and it makes them exceptionally powerful. Blast Chilled has dropped a tack launcher far over to the right and forward. So that means that since all the T2 is on the left for DOT, he might be able to get a few tack missiles off before these just upgraded T2 support factories are able to get engineers out and build TMD. He's actually building Ilshivas from those as well. So that brings his total up to seven T2 land factories pumping out Ilshivas versus let's see one two t2 yes two t2 land factories building pillars on the north so blast chill does not seem to be terribly interested in building a large t2 army he is more interested in these mass extractor upgrades that he's got going on around the north side of his base a dot actually has a, a notable mass advantage and uh since he upgraded all of his uh land factories to t2 and didn't keep any on t1 except the one that's building t1 engineers two that are building t1 engineers i think the power of uh, t2 is going to show in this game like uef and seraphim are both very t2 centric factions but the way these players play like especially blue is uh like it's, it's very greedy to upgrade everything to t2 it is and he's about to start losing some t2 mass extractors third missiles leaving the barrel for the attack launcher on blast chilled side that's going to be three t2 mass extractors down and there is not even a t2 engineer on line on the right to try to build tack defense so actually, he is going is to now. lose some of that eco defense say so what uh, actually there is now there is a uh, engineer on the right side building tmd yes after and... all of the mexes died right yeah he lost three mexes <laughs> or or four even <laughs> but uh, instant is... rebuild from blue actually very Where good is to the see extra eco coming from for dot because they're holding roughly the same amount of map and i see about the same amount of t2 mass extractors no there's four extra t2 mexes on the left side so dot is actually ahead that's that's where i was missing it there's also a reclaim difference of uh, 2000 in favor of dot T1 point defense on the left-hand side going to go down to a couple of forward Zooey's. A um, couple of Ilshivas over there as well, but there should be enough pillars to deny a push. The question is whether or not Blast Shield is going to move them into position. He's also building T2 point defense across the front line. Of course, a single T2 point defense doesn't do much in the face of a T2 army, but it will slow down Zooey's if there's a T1 push, and it does provide good backup fire for engagements in the area. So when you know exactly where fights are going to take place, it doesn't really hurt to have a couple of triads in the area generally. Also, since you tend to see some drops of T3 units, if one player gets to T3 significantly ahead of the other, um, it's not a bad idea to have some point defense in your base just to try to whittle away at the HP on those drops should they take place. Looks like Blast Shield has caught up in air production to a point. 36 interceptors versus 21, so he is actually ahead. Good dealio for him. Quite interesting to see that DOT is not mixing in Flock into his composition at all. I think. There's well, a bit. I mean, there's a bit. Yeah, there's one over on the left. 
If you're building more combat units, obviously you do better than if you're wasting mass on anti-air units, right? Yeah, of course your composition is going to be more consistent, but after such a huge air loss, uh, <laughs> I would expect to uh, for him to mix in some. But uh, DOT has great intel, a lot better than Blast Shield. Blast Shield lost his uh, Tito raid at the front. Well, but he does have an updated scout image this very moment. The caster scurs. Looks like that run by on the left did actually take place. So we've got some units slipping around the rear, going to pick up some mass extractor kills. And all of the units move to the right. Blast Shield is just not reacting at all to anything on the left. I don't but know what is going on here. He did have units there like a second ago. He moved them all to the right, I guess, to stop the forward oh. push from DOT through the center. Right. Maybe when the Very T2 odd. radar died, he didn't know how much else was coming. That's why you retreated. But, uh, ah, I understand. Still, like, Blast Shield has good bombers on the map. That's that's pretty nice. But I think Blast Shield is an, in a position from which it is difficult to recover. Because uh, he's going to lose the two Tito mixes at the back. That is a glorious amount of damage those bombers are doing. When you have that many units packed in, you got to remember that the damage the bombers are doing is increasing with every single unit. Yeah, they do 300 damage a pass, but if you're doing 300 damage to six units instead of three, that's 900 more damage your bomber's doing. And even if they do die, when you're laying in that much damage to so many units, you're softening them up for your pillars to take on later on. And while they might not be dead, it's gonna help you out later. T1 bombers hitting the T2 power generator on the south side. They are gonna get a second pass due to the fact that there's no flak in the area and uh, DOT has basically lost his entire air force at this point. He's got a handful of interceptors over on the right. So one T2 power generator down and the other is now getting hit. That is an excellent strike for Blast Shield. Interestingly, uh, DOT is kind of just tanking it. Like, he doesn't need the power apparently. He rebuilt it, but uh, I don't feel like he needs it. He's only plus 200, so if he lost that power generator, he would be minus 250. Um, so right. I think he doesn't need the second. He did not need the first T2 power generator, technically. It was an overbuild. Looks like oh, Blast that's... Shield might be trying to push in the middle, though. That's a very bad engagement, I think. Because last time I looked, uh, DOT had 56 Ilshivos, which is like insane, right? And Blast Shield only had like a little bit more pillars or even less. I'm not sure anymore, but. Like, if, if you take a look at how much mass is packed into an Ilshi versus a Pillar, that's like uh, lowest possible T2 mass uh, in one unit versus highest possible T2 mass in one unit. And the Ilshi are going to win. 46 Pillars versus 60 Ilshivas. But, lo and behold, the Percivals have hit the field. The first Percival is over on the left flank, and the second is following up rapidly. So if Blast Shield is able to pick up the units that are killing the back of his base and get these Percivals out on the front line, he might be able to re-secure map control. Because those Percivals, once you get three or four of them in a clump, they will wreck Ilshivas. T2 Transport is going to pick up the first two Percys and drop them in the back of the base. Called it when one player gets T3 far in advance of the other. Dropping your units in other places on the map to do raiding can be a huge um, push in the right direction. And those Percivals are going to drop right next to the power and the T2 HQ. He might try to snipe the HQ. Yeah, he's he's killing the Pigeons and the HQ, which is a huge loss. But uh, I think if you take a look at the pure unit count, DOT could attack with everything and potentially win. Does he know that, though, is the question. And when these Percivals drop, is he going to move in that direction? Oh, the T2 upgrade to T3 is 70% complete. If he focuses those Percivals right now, he can stop the T3 land push by DOT. DOT is going to move towards the north on the left, though. And that's going to be a little sketchy. There's five triads in the area and a handful of T2 units. I'm not sure which is going to come out ahead. Percival's killed both the power generators, and there goes the HQ. I think uh, I'm a bit ahead of you this time. I'm at 1857. I'm at 1937. Wow. 
I'll speed up to plus two for a tick. Okay. Did you ha did you buy new hardware by any chance? Usually it was the other way around. Yeah, I did. Oh. The oh. Ilshiva push <laughs> is very effective, but is it going to be enough is the question. Well, spoiler, uh, sadly, not really. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Two Percivals, I see three, four Percivals. Yeah, they're going to get denied. They're shunting off to the right. I'm at 1950? Uh, 20. 20, 20, 20 right now. Okay, I'll catch up to you. 25, good? 20, 25. All right, cool. Looks like Ilshiva's over to the right are gonna crush out this eco. Blast Shield is taking a hammering on this one, but uh, it is hard to call. They're still about even on economy. Yeah, and they with are. with the Percivals in play, this is still anybody's game. Well, the Percivals are all walking into the same direction. So if uh, a DOT spreads out uh, his army and raids in multiple spots, instead of just keeping it together and using it into this in the, in the same place, then uh, he can he can uh, get like a huge map control lead. Of course, all the reclaim is going to be on Blast Shield's side of the map, but uh, it will give DOT time to rebuild his side of the map and get back into the game after losing both power generators and the HQ. Uh, he is going looks... to run his entire clump of Ilshivas into the Percivals, though, so that is the end of that. Yeah, that is okay. that is sad to see, of course. But there's point defense going up in the center. I'm kind of amazed that Blast Shield hasn't used that T2 transport to just pick up Percivals and drop them where the units were incoming. I think, a he's bit very, I think he's very busy uh, rebuilding right now. Placing out all those move orders to get his stuff back on track. Right. DOT all is the mixes. at 109 and Blast Shield at 68 mass per tick, which is a huge difference. But Blast Shield should be drowning in Reclaim. Whereas uh, DOT is not going to have so much. So perhaps uh, DOT can uh, can drop some engineers on Blast Shield's right side of the map to try and reclaim Sun. There's about 3,000 reclaimed just in that one little pile of units from that engagement. Percival's dropped in the rear again. T1 bombers trying to deal with them, but the Percy's, oh, two Percy shots at a T1 power generator. That's not a very efficient use. <laughs> They're going to knock out T2 mass extractors and uh, hopefully make a dent in the base. Looks like DOT is going for combat upgrades. He got down to 31k HP and he's now working on nano regen, which should help him get out of uh, get out of death's reach. Because right now that's a flimsy commander. A couple of T1 bombers could theoretically kill it. I did not actually see what hurt him so much. Did he overcharge Percivals? I think Percivals? he ran into range of the Percivals to overcharge them. Right. And Makes that was sense. the damage that he took. He got to around 2,000 HP, judging from where his regen is now. So he was within two shots of death. Percivals are freaking strong. If you don't have an unupgrade, if you have an unupgraded ACU, their range superiority is so great and their damage is so high that easily one Percival can kill you if it's micro, because it can walk. Is it as fast or faster than the ACU? I think it's faster. Uh, sorry, Percival is faster than the ACU? Or is it the same? I think uh, I think faster, yeah. Okay. T2 transport got shot down. It flew over two mobile flak, so that's unfortunate. I think it had two, three Percivals on board. Three Percivals. So that's an unfortunate loss. Could have landed in the back of the base and made a difference as well. But Blast Shield is going to get back on track. He's got 117 mass to his name, filling in the rest of his mass extractors. Still got that uh, pair of hero Zooies in the back there. Three kills on one, two on the other, and ten on the tank. Those guys, it's like the ultimate raiding party in the rear. They might even get more kills. After the uh, T2HQ died for DOT, the uh, transition back into T3 was kind of late, I think. Like, if you compare the unit count he has now compared to the unit count he had, like, many minutes ago, 
the the like he he tried to build too many ilshis that's that's how i feel about it like he upcycled his t2 support factories to get his uh his, his t3 factory out real quick but, look at yeah, the sure. power income for both of these players minus 584 and minus 600 right yeah They're both power stalling massively <laughs> and blast shield actually made a t3 max In the most defended of all places. So perhaps we're going to see um, a game similar between uh, Turin and Farms with like a centralized versus decentralized style. But I guess like Glass Shield has so many Percy's now, it's going to be uh, quite difficult to recover from this, from a DOT point of view. And maybe he can, maybe maybe he can actually pull a Farm Slash and uh, a Calm Drop on top of Percy's with uh, some nice. <laughs> non upgraded ACU sort of things, but uh, you better get some assistance on that commander then because he's going to need both the nanos and the gun to uh, stand any chance of survival if he drops in the middle of a dozen percivals, right? Yeah, it looks like Blast Chill does have a T3 support factory on the right, and he is starting to get some build power in other areas, so he's not completely centralized. But it is funny to look at them because when you look at Blue's side of the map, there's just like this uniform scattering of buildings. And then you look at Blast Shields and it's all on the left. Just so much of it. Your favorite uh, Phobos are still dealing damage, killing two more Tito Mixes. <laughs> three kills on one, three on the other, and they're about to pick up another. They've both got a veterancy, and that tank is now at 11 kills thanks to that mass extractor. Three vet, Sam. Who would have thought we'd see the day? People in chat are asking, when's the fat boy? Probably after significantly more power because Blast Chilled is struggling on T2 power generators right now. Uh, well, actually, he's plus 1,500 at the moment, but whenever he bites into reclaim, that number goes way down, way down. I'm wondering if this uh, could be a setup that's trying to go for T3 gunships. Like, it's quite high build power. He overbuilt power just slightly. It, it kind of looks like it. The T3 gunships could totally throw the mix. There's not much flack over on the right-hand side for DOT. Such. If he was able... Say what? A such a good drop. First of all, drop. Straight down the center. He's going to be able to zap all of that T2 power. One hit KO with the three Percivals. There they go. First one down. Oh, don't let your Percival get reclaimed. Come on now. <laughs> and at the same Next time... Counter drops from uh, from DOT, but uh, not dealing as much damage. Blast Shield's ACU can re uh, overcharge the two Elshis, and the slippers on the left side are kind of not dealing with the main issue, which is the core base on T3 Eco. I love how three Percivals together can just, in like a firing cycle and a half, delete a off them. The HP difference is huge on them. Looks like T3 HQ is going to go down again. That's not good for DOT. He's going to lose out on that build power for a while. Oh, oh, really? oh, no, he might save it. Those T1 bombers. That's This is the Percival counter, guys. When you're Seraphim and you've got Percivals to deal with, T1 bombers are the answer. And HQ's down just before the Percival dies. Might have to catch up a little bit. I'm at 2830. But I guess it's it's an odd, right? So you're going to upload it. Yep. Oh no, wait, it's an even. That's why I'm going to upload it. Okay. I fast forwarded. I'm at 2839 now. Right. A big mass donation happening on the left side. Charging T1 and T2 units into Percy's. Not pretty. That's a death wish if ever I've seen one. But uh, all the slippers for uh, for DOT on the right side, actually. I always imagine Percival's as Daleks just yelling delete, delete every single time that they fire. Because more often than not, all it takes is one shot. 
<laughs> a bit of a mass overflow uh, stage for DOT. And uh, he's got lots of idle units. Wondering if he's uh, mentally given up or he's just a bad minute. Mental fatigue sets in. He could actually pull off a chicken build, I think. I don't know how smart that would be, but he could definitely do it. Not very, I think. Because uh, the Percivals are numerous enough to kill a chicken already. If he had the chicken behind a wall of Othams, though. I don't know. I think he is in bad shape because we're about to see the Percivals on the right clean up his last remaining group of Othams on the front line. He's got a handful, like five in the rear. So he might be able to defend his base from some kind of push, but the amount of Percivals on the left is just too damn high to stand up against. He's building Nothas. So maybe trying for a snipe at some point? Uh, I don't think we are going to see a Nothas snipe in a high level tournament. It would be so wrong. Nothas are going to be able to shred the HP on the Percivals in the back of this base though. DOT losing a significant amount of ground, but is still somehow ahead on economy. I guess due to all of the damage being done to Blast Shield's side as the Othams move through. Blast Shield's probably going to have to pick that one up with an overcharge because I think the Otham's going to be able to stay ahead of the Percivals uh, regardless of how long they chase it. 300 HP on that son of a gun. And it's down. I think this is the push that's going to clench it, though. Blast Shield's sending all of his Percivals down into the base on the left-hand side. That's where the current T3 HQ is, and if that falls, that's the majority of the build power for the left. DOT is getting the second gun on his commander. Ooh, that could make life interesting. I don't think this is a good upgrade to deal with Percivals, but uh, it may be a good upgrade to calm drop next to Blast Shield and try and kill him. Yeah, there's not many Percivals on that side, and there isn't any stationary anti-air. So as long as he avoided mobile flak... Oh, speaking of gunships, there's the first broadsword. Right. T3 air scout out. And that's apparently going to be all that's built from that factory. Blast Shield focusing on other things. Building ASAFs now again. All right. I think a spread attack order on the two T2 Flak and then on the Perseus could deal some damage from the Nothas. Because there isn't so much Flak actually. Looks like DOT is not stalling too hard, so he's actually going to get that gun upgrade relatively quickly. Wonder if he's going to risk going for the second nano upgrade or if he's just going to try to move in and take advantage of the commander. A second nano upgrade would be truly epic, but uh, it's also so expensive. Yeah. It does make your ACU very hard to kill, though. True. But uh, this, like could be, he... this could be a bad luck game. If he doesn't complete, he's just going to die now. The Percivals are all closing in on him. Yep, I think that is all she wrote. It's uh, That's a lot of Percivals. That Aww. is a lot of Percivals. And they're focus fired. <laughs> Delete. There goes the GG and boom. <laughs> oh, that was a lot of rating in a very weirdly paced game. It was, yeah. And interestingly, uh, Blast Shield was uh, was so far ahead in in uh, Percival production compared to the slippers of DOT. I think DOT just extended his T2 stage for just a bit too long. If he had attacked while Blast Shield that, uh, didn't have so much yet, and uh, like right before his uh, his uh, T3 is is active, he could have won the game. But uh, he, he he missed out on this. Had the unit count. Yeah, he missed out on this window of opportunity. Was I think... that due to lack of scouting? You think, or just underestimating the power of his own units? Uh, 
maybe overestimating the power of his opponent because I, I it did feel like DOT really respected Blast Chill for the entire game. You heard it here, folks. Don't respect, always attack. Right? Is that what <laughs> right. taking from this? Uh, <laughs> yeah, very good generalization, Brink. <laughs> don't listen to me. Don't listen to me. 